MR proxy objects are useful when rendering many instances of an object using the mental ray renderer. They are particularly useful with high polygon count objects such as fancy seats in an opera house or 3D trees. The reason is that they don't need to be converted to mental ray objects and you don't even need the source objects to be present at render time. This saves time and frees memory for rendering. The viewport display of an MR proxy approximates the source object. This helps with viewport performance when you have hundreds or thousands of instances to render. In this scene, you have four oak trees created using the AEC Extended Foliage object. Their level of detail, parameters, and materials have been adjusted to represent the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. You will create MR proxies of these trees that you can later scatter across an uneven terrain. Go to the Mental Ray Create sub-panel and choose MR Proxy. Click and drag a proxy object of any size and then go to the Modify panel. Click the None button under Source Object and then select a tree, for example the Winter Tree. Click the Right Object to File button. Navigate to the folder where you have placed the scene files you downloaded for this tutorial and then specify a name for your MR proxy, for example, My Proxy Tree Winter. As you save the file, a dialog appears. Here you can leave the default current frame active in the case of a non-animated object like this oak tree, or you can specify an animation if you are creating an MR proxy of an animated object. Click OK to exit the dialog. The MR proxy object is created as a .mib file format and a preview.bmp image is created and displays in the panel. The display of the MR proxy in the viewport is done by a set of points or viewport verts which mimics the shape of the source object. You can increase or decrease this number to your liking. Keep in mind that increasing the number may have an effect on viewport performance when you start adding multiple instances of the MR proxy. You can also enable Show Bounding Box as a way to frame the volume. You can repeat this procedure to create MR proxies for the other trees, or use the .mib.bmp files you downloaded for this lesson. To load an MR proxy from disk, you create a new MR proxy object of any size, go to the Modify panel, and then specify a proxy file to load. The MR proxy size is adjusted to match the source object. You can adjust the scale if you need the MR proxy to be bigger or smaller than the source object. Load up the remaining trees to have four proxies for the four source trees. If you render the scene now, you will notice that the MR proxies, although identical to the source objects as far as geometry goes, render only according to their wire colors. If you start building a library of MR proxies, you might also want to save their material libraries as well. Go to the Slate Material Editor. At the bottom of the Material Map browser, notice the four tree materials that are currently applied to the source trees. In order to save these to a separate library that you can recall at a later time, select the option to create a new library and give it a name, such as My Trees. This creates a new rollout, and it is now easy to copy the tree materials to that new library using simple click and drags. Once done, you can now right-click the My Trees rollout and save it as a .mat file and store it to disk. 
possibly in the same folder as the .mib files. If the materials are using any bitmaps, it is safer to also include the bitmaps into the same folder. In this case, the file named elmleaf.tga that you downloaded along with the scene files is needed for the tree leaves. At this point, you can leave the MR trees library displayed or close it. If you need to reopen it, you can do so again using the Browser's Option button. In the next movie, you learn how to scatter the MR proxies across an uneven terrain.